So, the first thing we are going to do before hopping in is mess around with some of the settings. These settings I will be recommending are personal preference, so feel free to change them to your liking. The first thing I would recommend is disabling the moving HUD. After that, I would increase your field of vision to the maximum. After this, I would bump my gamma down from the default of 2.2 to 1.5. 1.5 can be pretty dark, but if the game is too bright, it will look desaturated and won't be as scary. At the very least, I would turn this setting down to the minimum that you can handle. Keep in mind that you can activate your flashlight in-game at any time by pressing the F hotkey, and there is equipment called the Vision Enhancer that will give you night vision and heat vision. The final changes will be the most difficult of this process, which is the audio. People in this game are incredibly quiet, so what I've done is turn down the music and sound effects while boosting the voices from other players. I also opened my Steam's friend list, went to the cog in the upper right to access the settings, went to the voice tab, and then increased my own voice and the voices of others. Alright, so let's get into the actual game now that the settings are out of the way. The most important piece of information when the round starts is your new name and color. This is displayed in the bottom left of your HUD, next to your health bar. Every round you are given a new code name and color. It is important to keep these in mind because this name will be used when people reference you in conversations. It is essentially your new identity. In the upper left, you will see the objectives to complete to win the game. To see the full details of this list, the default hotkey is tab. If you ever get lost while traversing the level, there is a compass in the upper right corner of your HUD, as well as a map available to you at any time by pressing the M hotkey. Your health is located in the bottom left corner of the HUD. Underneath that will either be your oxygen bar or your disguise bar, depending on whether you are a spaceman or an alien. Certain parts of the map will have no oxygen. As spacemen, if you are on these parts of the map, your oxygen bar will deplete. Once it has been depleted, the spacemen will take damage until they die or find an oxygen-rich area. If you do take damage, there are health stations that you can see on your map that can be used to heal yourself. They are shaped as a blue plus symbol. As a spaceman, if you are being attacked while using the health station, you are able to cancel your healing by jumping. However, it is impossible to cancel healing if you are a monster, unless you have the decoy perk equipped. A monster does not need oxygen to survive, so instead their oxygen bar is replaced by a disguise bar, which will deplete over time. If you attempt to stay disguised for too long, your disguise meter will deplete, causing you to forcefully revert back to your monster form. Before your bar completely empties, you will also let out monster cries, which could possibly blow your cover, so be careful. Under the oxygen or disguise bar are universal abilities available to both the spaceman and the monster. The first of these abilities are the security cameras. As long as the security camera is active and not destroyed, footage will be viewable by pressing 4. In this mode, you can cycle through all the cameras throughout the level. You can also control the cameras as well. The second ability is the map of the level. This will provide crucial information regarding the locations of objectives, as well as displaying power weapon spawns that will happen after a certain period of time. In order to see what weapon will spawn at the specific location, you will have to use your HUD. A blue weapon icon will be displayed that will show the type of weapon that will be unlocked. These types of weapons include a shotgun, flamethrower, railgun, auto shotgun, rocket launcher, and even a nuke. The third ability is the shove. You can use this to get a sneaky kill by pushing off players and security bots into the vastness of space or onto traps. As a spaceman, keep in mind everyone has the same tasks, and the tasks are the same on every map. The only difference is the amount of tasks you will need to complete, which is dependent upon the amount of players you have within your game. The first objective is shown by satellites. Satellites will first appear as red. These have yet to be activated and must be turned on. If a satellite is active, it will appear as yellow, and will start moving into position. Once the satellite completes this process, it will change to blue, though this will take some time. As a side note, the game refers to these satellites or radars as communication arrays. The second objectives are located on the landing pads, labeled on your map as L1, L2, and L3. These will appear orange on the map if there is debris blocking the landing pad. 
Once the debris is removed, it will change to green. There are also lights surrounding the landing pad, which will change as well once the task is completed. The final objective is securing specimen eggs hidden throughout the map, and it is up to the spacemen to locate these eggs, activate them, and eject them. At first, these eggs will not appear on the map. Once a spaceman activates them, it will be shown to all other spacemen as well as the monster. If you have difficulty locating these hidden eggs, it is possible to find a handy dandy tool called a map scanner, which may be hidden somewhere on the map. You can use the map scanner to find all hidden eggs that have not yet been activated. It is also important to note that the eggs are slightly radioactive, so if you hear a scratchy noise, you are probably on top of one. Once the eggs have been successfully encased, you should take them to a nearby ejector, which is shown on your map as the three vertical green arrows. If an ejector is already busy with another item it is disposing, you can place your egg into a queue by dropping it on top of the door to the ejector. Once there is free space, the egg will be automatically ejected. The map scanner will also show you the location of spacemen and security bots with an icon of a space helmet. It will also reveal the location of the monster if they appear on the map outside of their disguise. As you complete your tasks, you will start earning points to your score. If you manage to earn over a certain threshold, you will be able to purchase a power weapon from a vending machine. The price and weapon will usually be different each round. Usually the person that purchases this weapon will be innocent because the monster will normally not perform spaceman tasks, though it is possible for them to. Maps will also have bonus supply crates hidden throughout them. These will not appear on your map or in your HUD, and do not contribute towards victory objectives. However, these give you a lot of points towards your personal score, so if you find one, be sure to eject them like you would a specimen egg. Once all of the tasks are completed, a ship will arrive to rescue the spacemen from the monster, but before takeoff, the spaceship does a quick scan to see if the monster is on board. If a monster is detected, the scan and ship glow red once it touches the monster. If the monster successfully sneaks aboard the ship, the spacemen will have to find and kill the monster. Keep in mind that the monster is normally far stronger than any single spaceman. I highly recommend forming a small squad out of spacemen that you have come to trust over the course of the game. Isolating yourself from team play does nobody any good and paints a target on your back. At the beginning of a round, it is far more likely that the random individual you meet will be one of the other 14 innocent spacemen instead of the only single monster. Even if the rescue shuttle lands, it is still possible for the monster to win by opening the door leading to the ship's cockpit. You will also want to keep tabs on your keycard at all times, which can be seen above your weapon icons in the bottom right of your HUD, especially towards the beginning of the game. A monster will normally not spawn with a keycard, and may attempt to pickpocket yours. If you are paying attention, you could possibly figure out the identity of the person that stole your card. The keycard plays a vital role in keeping yourself and others safe from harm. If a monster is chasing you down, you can delay them by locking doors behind yourself. If a monster manages to get a hold of a keycard, they can use it to split up, single out, and trap your teammates by locking the doors. Plus, if you lose your keycard, you will have no means of protecting yourself if the monster starts to chase you down. As a monster, your main objective is simply to kill all of the spacemen. The more spacemen and security bots you kill, the stronger you become. You are also capable of delaying the completion of tasks by activating traps that create detours along certain routes, or by interrupting tasks the spacemen have started. While you are off on your killing sprees, you will want to be wary of security cameras. Both the monster and spaceman can view working security cameras at any time, and security cameras will trigger an alert if they see a monster in its true form. There are some tools at your disposal spread throughout the map that will assist in your endeavor to devour the crew. However, the only ones that will appear on your map are the vents. The rest you will have to find using your vision. You will see these tools highlighted across the map through your HUD. The vents are fairly self-explanatory. They allow the monster to travel to any of the other vents throughout the entire map. However, they do give off a creaking sound effect, which potentially alerts spacemen nearby of your presence.
Even if you are hiding in a vent, it is still possible to be damaged, so if you are escaping from pursuing spacemen, make sure to hastily leave the area. Other tools at the monster's disposal include the ability to disable communications, a virus that you can let loose upon the populace that will turn everyone colorblind for a period of time, and the most powerful option of disabling the electricity across the entire map. When you disable communications, you prevent the spacemen from talking to one another and texting to one another. The colorblind virus turns everyone's vision gray, as well as making everyone only see people's names as question marks. The power outage stops all of the satellites that have been activated, forcing the spacemen into reactivating them once the power is turned back on. It also prevents the use and alarms caused by the cameras, and prevents spacemen from ejecting the specimen eggs. If an egg or research sample remains idle for too long, it will return to its original location. The power outage will remain active as long as the spacemen do not restart the electricity by turning on two different generators at around the same time. Though it is a bit tricky, it is possible for a spaceman to turn on two generators all by themselves. You can see how much time is left to turn on the next generator by seeing the animation depleting in the top right of your HUD. Another important piece of information is that turning off the power can be done multiple times per round. The other tools, such as jamming communications or unleashing the colorblind virus, can only be done once per structure. After the spacemen turn their power back on, there will be around 2-3 to three minutes of cooldown before it will once again be possible for the monster to turn off the power. If any of these tools are currently in effect, there will be an icon to display them in the upper right portion of your HUD. Apart from these tools, you also have special abilities that play a crucial part in your survival as a monster. The first of these abilities is your Disguise, which allows you to transform yourself into somebody else or a security bot, as well as devour keycards you pickpocket off of spacemen. The second ability is Transform. This allows you to turn into a monster and mutilate all that cross your path as well as consume corpses to restore your health. The third ability is Burrow, which allows you to hide underground, allowing you to get away from intense firefights or lay in wait for an ambush. Be careful though because frag and stun grenades still affect you as well as flamethrowers and rocket launchers. The final ability is laying an egg that contains a facehugger type creature. You can place this in frequently traveled areas in hopes that they will surprise those that pass by and get some free damage in. Surprisingly enough, there is also an ability not shown on the HUD, which is the Remote Arm ability. This can be used to trigger certain actions from a distance, and its default hotkey is N. Utilizing the Remote Arm ability properly is essential for constructing alibis and sneakily obstructing the spacemen from completing their tasks. The tribunal happens after a certain period of time. This is where the spacemen will gather to discuss what clues they have found and try to determine the monster's true identity. There will be a total of three tribunals unless the game ends before then. When a tribunal is active, it becomes impossible to eject specimen eggs. The game heavily promotes attending the tribunals, and I would never recommend skipping them except in very situational circumstances. The most important piece of information for a tribunal is to discover what spacemen have been murdered throughout the course of the game. Dead spacemen will only be displayed if the corpse of the individuals in question are discovered by another spaceman and reported. This can be done by activating a corpse. If a corpse has been identified, an icon will be displayed on the map for everyone to see, and if someone hovers over the corpse, it will show as being reported. When everyone gathers for the tribunal, certain actions can be performed to test if someone is the monster or not before placing your votes. While within the green ring surrounding the tribunal, nobody can be harmed whether spaceman or monster. When performing the tests, make sure to do so outside of the ring. Some of these monster tests include the usage of items such as health syringes, fire extinguishers, stun grenades, and trip mines.
Parasite detected. Parasite detected. Most of these items will either force the monster out of their disguise, or significantly lower their disguise bar, causing them to revert to monster form earlier than normal. It might also be worthwhile to check the surrounding area with heat vision to see if the monster is burrowed nearby. Once a tribunal concludes, the individuals with the most votes will be marked as suspicious. If the monster is currently disguised as one of the individuals that have been voted, they will be forced out of their disguise. A monster will also be incapable of disguising themselves as any of the other identities marked as suspicious. If the spacemen successfully vote upon the monster's original identity, the monster will receive a significant debuff. If an innocent spaceman has been voted suspicious, they will be marked as purple within the monster's vision, as if they were a murderer, allowing them to be singled out anywhere on the map, and they will also receive a significant debuff. A murderer is an innocent spaceman that has wrongfully killed another innocent spaceman. The security bots will treat any suspicious person as hostile if they fire their weapons nearby. Security bots also have a tendency for shooting randomly, so don't be taken by surprise by their seemingly suspicious behavior. Since the debuff provided by the tribunal is so important, it is typically better to not vote for someone without any actual proof. It would be far more beneficial to vote for identities that have not appeared at the tribunal. Spacemen that are not at the tribunal are either dead, the monster, or are clueless on how to play the game. If the monster is disguised and remains in the tribunal circle until the tribunal ends, it appears that they will be forced out of their disguise and into their monster form, even if they are disguised as someone who is already dead and has not yet had their corpse reported. The Vision Enhancer does not only provide night vision and heat vision, but it is necessary for identifying corpses that have been consumed by the monster or corpses that have been charred by the flamethrower. Now that you are dead, your role to play is not necessarily over. As a ghost, you can try to warn the living about the monster's location and commune with them. A ghost can flicker lights or make creepy noises in an attempt to warn of a nearby monster or to answer questions the spacemen may have for them. These abilities, however, have a cooldown, so the spacemen that are still alive should be wary of asking too many questions too fast, otherwise the ghosts may be incapable of answering. As a ghost, when you press F1, you will now be given all of the information with regards to the current round, including the identities and roles of all the players. If you have any questions regarding certain game mechanics, feel free to comment below. I am still learning the game myself as well, so I may not be able to answer all of your questions. I hope this video has clarified some of the more confusing mechanics regarding unfortunate spacemen, and I hope this video will create a more fun environment for everyone. I hope to see you all in-game.